Hello, and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and sleepy meditations, designed to make bedtime a dream. Just talking to your adult for one second, if this podcast helps your little one sleep, please find the time to leave us a short review. We'd be so grateful to hear from you and it will help our stories reach more families. So, tonight we're back in Sleepy Forest, but not with Coco this time. We're going to meet a little dragon with the best name. He's called Disco, and can you guess why? Because he was born to dance. He knows all the moves. And one day... He flies down to Sleepy Forest and meets other animals who love dancing as much as he does. It's not long before Disco and his friends create some wonderful new dances together. I love to dance. Perhaps one day, if you hear some lovely music, you could have a dance too. And maybe pretend you're Disco, the dancing dragon. But for now, settle down more snugly in your bed. Picture yourself in Sleepy Forest, and I'll begin. This is The Dragon Who Loved to Dance, by Gillian Rogerson. High on a mountaintop in Sleepy Forest, a baby dragon was getting ready to hatch from its egg. The parents of the dragon held hands and waited for their little one to appear. A single crack zigzagged down the glittering purple surface of the egg. The mother dragon said, Oh, I wonder what our baby will look like. I wonder if they'll know how to fly. The father dragon smiled. Dragons are born knowing how to fly. Another crack ran down the egg. What should we call our little one? The mother dragon asked. We still haven't decided on a name yet. The father dragon replied wisely. As soon as we see our baby, we'll know which name is perfect for them. A third crack appeared on the egg and ran all the way around it. The purple egg began to jiggle from side to side, as though the little dragon inside just could not wait another minute to get out. The egg rolled over and broke completely open. A baby dragon, with skin the colour of freshly opened leaves, jumped up and smiled up at his parents. His proud parents looked into his emerald green eyes and fell totally in love with him. To their surprise, their son began to do something quite unexpected. The little dragon shuffled his feet along the ground, waved his arms in the air and wiggled his little dragon bottom the mother dragon whispered. What's he doing? I'm not sure, the father dragon whispered back. Maybe he's got an itch that he needs to scratch. The confused parents looked more closely at their beautiful son. The little dragon nodded his head in time to a silent rhythm and tapped his feet on the ground. He clicked his fingers and began to hum a joyful tune. Then he jigged from side to side and kicked his legs in the air. He waved happily at his parents as he moved around. His mother and father waved back, but they didn't know why their son was moving in such a peculiar way. Just at that moment, a beautiful owl landed on the branch of a nearby tree. She fluffed her white feathers and settled herself more comfortably on the branch. 
she smiled at the parents and said congratulations to them on the birth of their son. The parents kept their eyes on their son, but moved closer to the owl and asked if she knew what he was doing. Dancing, the owl replied, and very good he is too. He's got a good rhythm going on there. Look at him go. He's making me want to dance too. The owl started to bop up and down on the branch. The mother dragon said, But dragons don't dance. We fly and we walk. And sometimes we run if we have to, but mainly we fly. The owl gave the parents a knowing look. You used to dance, don't you remember? Didn't you two meet at a moonlight disco years ago? Isn't that where you fell in love with each other? A dreamy look came into the parents' eyes and they gazed fondly at each other. The mother dragon said, Oh yes, we did meet at a moonlight disco. I've been so busy flying here, there and everywhere that I've forgotten we used to dance. Your son was born with a love of dance in his heart, the owl said. Has he got a name? Oh, we forgot about that, the father dragon said. But I have the perfect name for him. The parents went over to their dancing son and held out their arms to him. The little dragon danced over to them and into their arms. In a voice full of love, the father dragon said, Disco, your name is Disco. We've been waiting all day for you to come out of your egg. Disco repeated his name. He grinned, nodded, and said his name a few more times, as if he couldn't get enough of it. Then he jumped out of his parents' embrace and began to dance around the broken eggshell, whilst singing his name over and over again and clicking his fingers and tapping his toes. The sight of their happy son made the mother and father dragon laugh in delight. They attempted to join in with his dancing moves, but they couldn't quite remember what to do and gave up after a while. Disco danced a little longer before flopping to the ground and falling fast asleep. The next day, the proud parents introduced Disco to the other dragons who lived on the mountain. Disco shyly said hello to the gathering of dragons. And then he began to dance. He just couldn't help himself. His feet just had to hop from side to side. His arms just had to wave back and forth. And his body just had to twirl and whirl around. The other dragons were astonished and asked the parents what Disco was doing. Dancing, Mother Dragon replied, with a loving smile on her face. But dragons don't dance, an elderly dragon said. We fly and we walk. And sometimes we run if we have to, but mainly we fly. Mother Dragon nodded. That's what I thought, but then I remembered that we all used to dance. But we were so busy flying here, there and everywhere that we forgot how to. Do you remember how to dance? The elderly dragon frowned, as though searching for a memory. He said, I'm not sure. D 
Did we really dance? Mother Dragon nodded. We did. Disco was born knowing how to dance. He's got a natural rhythm in his heart, one that we all have. I keep trying to copy him, but my feet trip over each other. But I'm certain I'll remember how to dance again soon. The elderly dragon smiled. I hope I remember too. Look at the fun Disco is having. The little dragon continued dancing and added a few wiggles and jiggles. He shimmied back and forth along the ground, humming happily to himself. Such was the joy on his little face that the other dragons began to smile. Some of them even tried to dance too, but they kept bumping into each other and had to keep saying sorry. Disco kindly showed them some of his simpler moves. But that didn't work either, and two young dragons ended up with their tails somehow tied together. The elderly dragon said, I can see how good Disco is at dancing, but can he fly? Oh, we forgot about that, Mother Dragon said. Father Dragon asked Disco if he would like to learn how to fly. Disco said he would like that very much. His parents took him to the edge of the mountain and showed him how to open his wings and flap them back and forth. Disco copied them and soon found a rhythm in the flapping of his wings. His feet jigged merrily from side to side, as though dancing to the movement of his wings. When he was ready, his parents showed Disco how to soar into the sky. Disco's little face frowned in concentration as he launched himself into the air. The wind rushed beneath his wings and took him higher and higher. The little dragon smiled. He veered to the left and then to the right. Flying was amazing, totally amazing, and Disco loved it. He looked down and realised he could see the whole of Sleepy Forest below him. He saw lots of forest animals. Some were moving through the long grass, and others were grazing in the flower meadows. A few were wallowing happily in the rivers, and some were asleep in the trees. To his surprise and delight, he noticed some elephants were actually dancing. Disco had never seen anyone else dance before. He swooped a bit lower to get a better look. The group of dancing elephants saw him and waved their trunks in a cheery hello. Disco waved back. The need to dance was too strong for Disco to resist. He flew to the nearest mountain and landed on top of it. He folded his wings behind his back and began to boogie and bop. He twisted and twirled this way and that and waved his arms around in the air. He hummed a happy tune. It was a melody that came straight from his heart. His parents landed next to him and watched lovingly as their little dancing dragon boogied cheerfully on the mountaintop. He was a joy to watch. After a while, the dragon family took to the skies again. 
but even though Disco loved flying with his parents, the second they landed, he began to dance. He just couldn't help it. His parents loved flying with their son too, but they could see how much his face lit up with pure happiness every time he danced. After discussing the matter between themselves, they came up with an idea. That evening, as the dragon family were roasting marshmallows on an open fire, the mother dragon smiled fondly at Disco and said, We've been thinking about how much you love dancing. With his cheeks full of warm marshmallows, Disco nodded. He did love dancing very much. Mother Dragon continued, And we thought it would be wonderful if you met other animals who love dancing too. Perhaps you could even dance with them. Disco quickly swallowed the marshmallows. Really? I would love that. When we were flying earlier, I saw some dancing elephants down in the forest. I'd love to meet them. Do you think they'd like to meet me? Of course they would, his father said. You are an amazing little dragon with a very special talent. His mother said, You should fly down to the forest tomorrow and meet those elephants. You might meet other animals who can dance too. And when you come back home later, you can show us any new moves you've learned. Perhaps the right dance will help us remember how to dance again. Disco promised to learn as many new dances as he could. He was sure one of them would be perfect for his parents. Early the next morning, Disco said goodbye to his parents and set off on his dancing adventure. He flew over the tops of the snow-capped mountains and swooped down to the forest. He landed near the elephants, who were dancing again. The elephants didn't notice the dragon at first, because they were too absorbed in the dance they were doing. The elephants had arranged themselves into a circle, and as they jigged to the left and then to the right, their long trunks waved joyfully in the air. An older elephant was sitting in the shade of a tree, playing a merry tune on a big drum. Disco watched the elephants as they shimmied to the right, and then skipped to the left, moving in perfect time to the beat of the drum. Before too long, Disco felt the rhythm catching a hold of him. His feet began to tap, and his fingers clicked in time to the music. He moved closer to the elephants and watched their skipping feet. One of the smaller elephants noticed him and with a smile she made space for Disco in the circle. Disco grinned happily and joined the dancing elephants. His steps were in perfect time with theirs, and he even added a little wiggle and whirl now and again. The elephants noticed his fancy moves and copied him. Soon, the elephants and the dragon had made up a completely new dance. When the dance had finished, Disco introduced himself and said thank you to the elephants for letting him join them. 
the small elephant said, That was our first dance of the day. We're going to do another one now. You can join us if you like. Do you know how to do the conga? Disco said he didn't, but he liked the sound of it. The elephants organised themselves into a line, with Disco in the middle. Using their trunks, tails, and in Disco's case, their wings, the animals made a long line that stretched back into the trees. The elephant with the drum began to tap out an upbeat rhythm on his instrument, and off the animals went dancing the conga through the forest. Four steps and a kick to the left. Four steps and a kick to the right. Disco picked up the movements in no time. It was a wonderfully happy dance and it made him laugh with utter joy. He thought about the dragons back on the mountain and was certain they'd be able to do the conga dance too. He would teach them the moves later. The elephants and the little dragon congered through the forest, with the drumming elephant jigging behind them, never once losing the beat on his drum. After a while, the elephants came to a stop, and the largest one told Disco their dancing was over for the day. But if Disco wanted to find more animals who love dancing, he should visit the porcupine family, because they would be doing their morning ballet soon. They told him which way to go through the forest. Disco thanked the elephants again, and then went on his way. He had no idea what ballet was, but he'd find out soon. A few minutes later, he found the porcupine family. There were five of them, and they were standing on their tiptoes and gently twirling on the spot. They slowly swayed to the left and then to the right. Their arms held out elegantly reaching to the sky. Disco thought they looked very graceful, and he was certain he'd never be able to move like that. The mother porcupine noticed the little dragon and welcomed him warmly. She said, Are you the dancing dragon? I've seen you dancing on the mountain tops." Disco nodded. I love dancing, but I don't think I could do what you're doing, though. She smiled at him and said, You don't know until you try. Watch what I do and do the same. She held her arms out and waved them gently in the air, like ripples on a river. Disco copied her movements, and to his surprise, he discovered he was rather good at it. The porcupines showed him some more ballet moves, and even though some were trickier than others, Disco tried his best and did very well. He had a wonderful time. When the ballet dancing came to an end, The porcupines asked the little dragon to show them some of his dance moves. Disco boogied and shimmied. He whirled and he twirled. He bopped and hopped to his own beat. The porcupines followed his moves and mixed in some of their ballet movements too. And very soon, the dragon and the porcupines had made up a completely new dance. Disco showed the porcupines how to do the conga, which they absolutely loved. 
When the dancing was over, the porcupines thanked Disco for spending some time with them and said if he wanted to meet other dancing animals, he should find the pink flamingos down by the river bank. They showed him which way to go and then said goodbye to the dancing dragon. Disco headed to the river bank practicing some of his new ballet moves along the way. He soon came to a group of bright pink flamingos who were standing along the riverbank. Disco was amazed to see that they were all balancing on one leg. The flamingos looked like they were waiting for something to happen. Disco waited too. And then, something did happen. A turtle shuffled through the forest with a violin in her hands. Sorry I'm late, she said. I slept in. I just couldn't get out of my comfy shell this morning. She moved over to the waiting flamingos, sat down, and tucked the violin under her chin. She began to play a beautiful song. The sound of it caused the flamingos to start dancing along the riverbank in long, graceful strides with their heads held high. They strutted to the left, clicked their fingers three times, and then strutted to the right, before twirling around and starting their movements all over again. Disco's feet tapped to the rhythm of the turtle's tune. One of the flamingos noticed Disco and waved him over. He made room for the dragon and showed him how to strut in time with the others. It didn't take long for Disco to pick up the movements, and he enjoyed moving back and forth with the brightly coloured birds. He particularly liked the twirling around parts, and couldn't help adding an extra twirl and a double whirl sometimes. He added a couple of bops too, the flamingos noticed his moves and copied him, and soon a new dance was created. Disco stayed with the flamingos for a while and learned more of their dances, and in return he showed them some of the new ones he'd learned that day. He wasn't surprised to find out they loved doing the conga. After a while, the dancing came to an end and the flamingos said they had to fly, but told Disco that if he wanted to continue dancing, he should head deeper into the forest, where he would find lots of animals who loved to dance. The little dragon thanked them, and watched the pink birds as they flew away over the trees. He walked further into the forest, until he heard the sound of music coming from somewhere. He followed the melody, and arrived at a clearing, where a trio of gorillas were playing guitars. Other gorillas were dancing in pairs and moving smoothly back and forth across the grass. Now and again, one of the dancing gorillas would spin around and dip to the ground whilst holding hands with their partner. The music was joyful and Disco found himself bopping from side to side. The gorillas saw him and invited him to join them. 
Disco partnered up with a gorilla who was about his size, and soon the pair were waltzing around the ground as elegantly as the others. Disco couldn't help adding his own touches with a spin here and a kicking leg there. His moves impressed the gorillas, and they did the same as the little dragon. And it wasn't long before the gorillas and the dragon were moving to a new dance. Disco stayed with the grooving gorillas a while longer, and even learned how to strum the guitar. Everyone was being so kind to him. He carried on through Sleepy Forest, on the lookout for more dancing animals. Disco soon came across a couple of red-furred foxes, who taught him how to fox trot through the blackberry bushes. Then he met a kind-faced panda, who showed him how to perform a slow shuffle beneath the shady boughs of an old oak tree. Later on, he joined a dozen stripy tigers as they performed a tango across a wooden bridge. Their tiger feet and dragon feet tapping a beat on the wood. Some time later, Disco took a rest at the side of a river and gazed in wonder as a group of smiling otters performed a synchronised swimming dance through the water. They asked Disco to join them, but he didn't like the idea of getting his feet wet. So he stood up and copied their movements on the dry land instead. The day wore on, and Disco carried on dancing with different animals. He boogied with badgers outside their burrows. He sambered with squirrels as they danced around a large tree. He met an elderly monkey, who did a mamba whilst playing the mandolin. And he had a fabulous time dancing with some cheerful chipmunks who hopped and bopped through the forest. Disco had a wonderful time learning lots of new dance moves and an even better time making new friends along the way. Most of all, Disco thought that making up new dances with the other animals was the best fun of all. The sun made its slow journey across the sky and headed towards the horizon. The first star of the night twinkled into view. The little dragon began to feel tired, and he couldn't stop himself from yawning. It was time for him to go home. He opened his wings and flew into the sky. But even though he was tired, his dragon feet still jigged a little jig as the memory of the day's dances lingered in his mind. As Disco flew through the darkening sky, he thought about the animals he'd met and all the dancing they'd done together. He'd had an amazing time and couldn't wait to do it all again. 
His mother and father were waiting for him on the mountain top. They hugged him and asked him about his day. The little dragon still had a small amount of energy left, so he showed his parents some of his new moves. More stars appeared and a full moon shone down on the little dancing dragon. Disco was lost in the magic of his dancing and closed his eyes. He listened to the sounds of the night. Hoots came from treetop owls. A nightingale sang sweetly. The soft calls of good night echoed through the forest on the evening breeze. Disco felt the rhythm of the night surrounding him, like a soothing lullaby of relaxing sounds. He swayed gently from side to side, so lost was he in his nighttime dance that Disco didn't notice that all the other dragons on the mountain had silently gathered around him. They saw how slowly he was dancing and how his wings gently opened and closed as though he was flying. The dragons began to copy his soothing dance, and they softly swayed to the melody of the evening too. They smiled gently at each other. This was a dance they could all do easily. Still with his eyes closed, Disco yawned, and yawned again. His feet, finally, came to a stop. Mother Dragon scooped her son into her arms and took him into their cosy cave. She placed him in his bed and tucked a warm cover around him. She kissed him goodnight. She returned to the dragons and joined them as they danced their special nighttime dance. Very soon, and one by one, the dragons remembered how to dance. The moon shone down brightly on the dancing dragons as they discoed merrily through the night. <laughs>